Hey, hi all. Welcome back to BRR Knowledge Center. In this today's session, we'll talk about cognitive services demonstration part, like how I'm going to write a sample program to integrate cognitive services into C Sharp. So in the earlier sessions, we have seen the introduction part and a couple of uh, cognitive services which got introduced in Azure Cloud, Azure Portal. And also I've seen how to register uh, to get use of uh, cognitive services to enjoy the AI features. So basically cognitive services brings up AI within reach of every developer, right? So and uh, for the data scientist, scientist as well. So it has a couple of leading models, a variety of use cases can be, uh, you know, use it and you can unlock it. All it takes is an API call to embed the ability to see, uh, you know, a speak or understand or in translate and you take decisions on a couple of, uh, you know, uh, apps or the files in your applications. So basically uh, these Azure cognitive services converts text to you know, speech for more natural interfaces, speech translations or integrate real-time speech translation into your applications and speaker recognition and identify and verify the people speaking based on audio. So now, so if you look at the examples of cognitive technologies, including, you know, computer vision or speech to text, language processing, you know, uh, machine learning. So, and robotics, so all these components are examples of cognitive technologies. Okay, let me quickly open my, uh, you know, the uh, C-shot. And then before I get into the uh, writing of program, so I just wanted to, you know, recap. So just uh, uh, you know, wanted to retouch the uh, earlier discussion, like how uh, uh, so people wanted to register and kind of application, or people wants to use cognitive services. What they have to do? I just explained earlier, but I just wanted to recap. You know, so I'll just open my another uh, PPT here, which I already opened and uh, ready to demonstrate. If you look at here, this is how I was explained earlier, like. If I wanted to create or if I wanted to use my you know, cognitive services into my C Sharp application, first of all, you need to register on a cloud in the cognitive services section. So here I just created speech to text service because now I'm going to demonstrate speech to text. And here provided a couple of things and then clicking on that and you will be getting this stuff, right? And in this section, so you will be having an endpoint, right? And these keys. So I, I, I basically use the endpoint and these keys, right? These keys, one of the key and the endpoint. And then I'll start my, you know, um, uh, writing a program to utilizing of this AI features, right? Uh, translating my speech to text, got it? So now I'll, I'll get into my sheet app application, right? And see how I'm going to explain it. So this is my uh, console application, right? So by default, it is coming up with my you know, uh, class and main you know, method where the compiler is going to start. And these are something examples. So, so and one more thing I just, uh, I would like to explain you. So you have to add, you know, the cognitive uh, services dot speech uh, package. And also if you wanted to use audio, like speech to text, you need to add audio and translation. If you wanted to use it, you need to use translation. So these are some of the main spaces and libraries you need to add it. So for today's demo, so speech, we are going to work out speech to text. You need to add this particular need space into your you know, a solution through a package manager, right? So if you go to the package manager, uh, where you can uh, get this main space and you just uh, search that. So if I say dot speech, this already installed and it is showing to me saying that it was already installed to this application. Okay, if it is not installed, you need to select this and you need to install it so that it will install into your project and uh, add it to your reference, uh, project reference. Only thing is you need to import that, that's fine. So that is a prerequisite, only prerequisite is that that, that, that is a basic uh, thing you need to do that. And second thing is, as I uh, told you, right? So you have to uh, make a note on that kind of uh, endpoint, right? And the uh, subscription key, that is the access key, because the access key is the prime aspect here to access the 
relevant uh, cognitive services into targeted application. So to do that, so what I'm going to do is, so I'll be declaring, you know, uh, two global variables, right? So that I'll use these uh, endpoints or my uh, key in all over and the methods which I'm going to read it. So hence I'm declaring here variables of type static, right? Static string, subscription key, right? Is my subscription key is I already having it in my you know Azure portal, right? So I'm going to copy it through here, uh, and I go back, and I can get through here if you want. I can get through here and points keys and endpoint. So uh, it is going to give me keys. These are the keys, and I can copy, and this is my endpoint. So for now, I think I'll uh, uh, having all the stuff here in my file here, so I'm just going to copy these two, right? So these are two things I'm going to, you know, uh, use it in my application, right? So one thing is a subscription key and another thing was endpoint. This is my access key as nothing but subscription key, which I'm going to, you know, um, access through uh, subscription key and endpoint uh, to get, uh, know the models and variety of uh, methods in the cognitive service. So once I uh, declare these two variables globally, right? Next step was, right? I'm going to uh, define some functions with respect to that, right? So that means uh, if I'm going, if, if you wanted to me write some functions, those functions should be uh, asynchronous because uh, as soon as I speak, uh, it has to execute. It won't come out uh, from the procedure, right? So I should mark that as async. Hence, I mark my main method also async here. And whatever methods I'm going to write it here. So all those methods, I'm going to mark it as async and task. So that way I need to write it. So now first thing what I'm going to uh, explain here is I'm going to write translate speech. Okay, translate speech. But before that, I think uh, it's better to, you know, uh, uh, first we write the continuous speech into the nation asynchronous, right? I think uh, that will be better. Uh, first thing is we have to convert our speech to text, right? So we will write a function for speech to text, right? And then we'll look at the translation part. Okay, so are you you wanted to translate speech as well? We can uh, get that means this also here. I already uh, voted my translation speech also because it is there in speech itself. Speech name speech itself. Or your translation. So no need to add this uh, separate list. Once you add this, you will get this translation also. Language translation. Okay. For now, what I'm trying is so I'm going to write a function like recognize speech. Right, recognize speech. Uh, let me copy that so so that it is very easy for me as well. Right, uh, recognize speech where I have already the stuff I've been already copied out. So I'm just simply copying this stuff. Right, this is my function. So where I'm defining private static async recognize speech. So here uh, I just mentioning the subscription key. So I think you can use either of any key. Um, basically I have two keys. So and um, I mentioned here one key and another key I can use it here. And this is my region where I've been created. And I'm just look to like you know speech recognizer of this configuration. And I'm just say say speak something here. And once I started speaking, the recognizer will uh, know catch my voice and it put it into this result. I'm just checking whether this result is recognized as a valid speech and then writing this. Okay, so this function, I'm going to use it here. So recognize speech, right? 
I'm just calling this and then I'm going to uh, say uh, use it to input something, right? Read line so that I'll go, I'll close my that. Before that, I'm informing that user that speech is finished or I just stay finished. So this was uh, now uh, saying the morning because this call is not awaited. Then when you use this thing, you have to use await keyword. Right now, no uh, warnings here, so everything seems fine. So leave over these because as far well, right now, I'll only come through these uh, subscription. Right endpoint, I'm going to use it for other purpose. We'll look into that in the coming uh, sessions. Okay, <clears throat> the other thing is, so I'm just removing it because it is not required for this demo. I only require key. I just start right here. So. When you uh, finish this and start running, so I'm just starting uh, running my uh, application. When I screen that application, so it starts, uh, you know, from here, hi, hello, right? And I press speak something. Hi, so oh, I think it uh, went through. Okay. Read line. Let me remove this so that you have clarity on that because you didn't get in confused because the pressing of hi, hello. Uh, oh my god, it is finished. I just uh, spin my application, so I'll just start speaking once I get to start speaking. Hey, hi, hello. Uh, welcome to the demonstration part of uh, speech to text. Yeah. Hey, hi, hello. Welcome to the demonstration part of speech to text. So when you give a space, uh, it will it it will pick up that none, and then it will uh, print here. Basically, it will take the uh, voice uh, as soon as soon as we take a breathe in speaking that and. And and after that, it come out here, and that it will check that the result of reason. So when I put here debugger, we'll see that. Hi, hello, how are you? What are you doing? Is it okay? Thanks. So when I look at here, the reason is recognize the speech. So this also recognize the speech. That means once I give us a uh, kind of breathe here. What it will do is it will recognize my speech and it will put that flag. So once it is done, then it will come into here and then it is writing on the console. Hi, hello, how are you? What are you doing? Is it okay? Then finished. When you continuously speak about, uh, when you continuously start speaking it, it will try to capture everything. So let me try that. Uh, hi, uh, uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, welcome to uh, uh, the demo of uh, speech to text according to services in G Sharp application. So basically, so we need to register an app on, on Microsoft Azure portal by choosing according to services. And then you need to choose the API which you wanted to. And once you register, so you need to make sure that you are going to note down the subscription key and the endpoint. So using the subscription key, you are going to, you know, integrate. Oh, hi, good morning to everyone. You are welcome to the demo of speech to text quality services in G Sharp application. So basically, so we need to register an app on Microsoft Azure portal by choosing cognitive services, and then you need to choose the API which you wanted to. And once you register, so you need to make sure that you are going to know down the subscription key and then point. So using the subscription key, you are going to integrate or start integrating cognitive services into the you know c sharp so this is how it is working a uh, very beauty beauty because uh uh accurately 99.999 percent so whatever speech it is you know uh taking from the user or the end uh, user the speech completely converting into text here so make sure that so the subscription key is uh, uh, valid and doesn't have expiry date or expiry it should be active so that it will connect to your service and then it uh, use the uh, model of uh, speech to text 
So this is simple uh, kind of uh, routine I've been written like you now. I recognize the speech and the kind of configuration speech configured from subscription of subscription key in the region which you created because as I, as I already shown you that. So I've been created my, you know, this thing in uh, UK South, UK region, right? Hence, uh, I, 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 I'm, I'm mentioning it here, uh, like, you know, uh, look at here. So you'll be having like, you know, where uh, you are creating this stuff. Uh, here, if you look at here, uh, you'll see the region, right? Uh, so based on the region, um, can I come here? And I think uh, here we are going to give a region. Once you give the region, so it is going to create that. And that location will be displayed here. So anyway, that location you have to specify here. Okay. So this is something I would I would like to you know uh, explain you regarding this demo. The simple application. So what we did was we just imported uh, this card into you know uh, speech here, and I then just uh, return you know. Uh, uh, recognize the speech and then this thing. So if you wanted to uh, do a continuous speech recognition, right? So uh, how you will do? So let me see uh, another function. So going back to my this thing. Okay. If you wanted to uh, speak continuously, then it is going to work out. Let me copy that. And coming here. And here, so uh, I'm going. I'm, I'm having another function which is continuous speech recognition async. Same uh, kind of syntax. So you need to create a object of config with the subscription key, and then look through that. But here, I'm going to add some events to my recognizer. So the my recognizer class. One thing is here. Um, I'm assigning recognizing of sender and event ops, right? And uh, it is recognized, then I'm getting, uh, you know, the output here with this, and I'm just checking. Basically here, I don't have an event here, whether it is recognized or recognizing or et cetera, et cetera. So here I'm just adding a, a event recognized, right? And once it is recognized, then I'm, you know, uh, knowing that this is recognized, and then I'm displaying it in the, uh, console so, and again another event session started so this method i'm just positive sender event ox and i'm saying so session has started you can start speaking and when session stopped so i'm going to you know say that session ended and here i'm going to invoke start continuous recognition async configure await okay so once i call this it is going to invoke this method okay in my do I look, what I'm doing is uh, while talking, so right, somehow, some, some somehow, and somewhere, I just wanted to stop it, right? So I'm going to put this in the while loop, asking to enter to stop. When I enter, then what it will do is it is going to stop my process, right? Stop continuous recognition async configure await. Here I'm going to start. And here I'm going to stop. Got it? So earlier, what did you do is right. So as soon as you speak and you just give us some breathe and speaking, it is going to recognize your speech and then it is converting and showing on the console. But in this case, I don't want to uh, take uh, my breath and uh, decide that my speech is over. I just wanted to ask uh, or uh, given uh, you know kind of event to the program saying that. As soon as a user presses enter, then only you need to stop my speech. Otherwise, you need to continuously uh, recognize my speech and keep it somewhere till I press enter. So if you wanted to uh, continuously speak and wanted to document that or convert to text until unless you say that stop kind of a command. But in case instead of command, I'm just depending on the key and the key is like enter is pressed from the keyboard then I assume that my speech is done and then I'll convert my speech to text and then show on the, this uh, console. The thing is, this is going to start first and then it will ask you to start session and speak and this is going to stop your session. This will fire uh, when the stop continuous recognition async is invoked. 
this is going to start first and this is going to stop later. So once this is done, then it comes to here, recognized. So once recognized is uh, five, I'm going to check that is equal to recognize speech or not. Then I'm going to you know, print my final statement here. So how to invoke this? So um, what I'm doing is I'll just go to my main method, right? I'll just comment this, right? Because uh, I, I'm not coming to this recognize speech because it is kind of a short term demonstration uh, when the user is having or taking a break, then it is recognizing and displaying it. But sometimes if it comes to real time, uh, if a person want to document a couple of uh, uh, you know speeches or uh, wanted to record, right, uh, as a document, the complete demonstration, right? So then he used to call this method and when he presses enter, then it will get all the speech and put it in the document or display it on the console by converting to text. So to call this, I'm going to comment all this stuff. Um, right. So what I'm trying to do is I'm going to call that method, whatever method has been written here. In my case, continuous speech recognition async dot root. Right? And then console read. This is how I'm going to uh, invoke my a continuous speech recognition async method. Okay. So why it is asking me to put something? Let's see. Oh, wait. No. Not required. Okay. If I remove this, what will happen? Let me see that. Oh, it is required, but why it is going? This I think uh, material lags await operators and it will run synchronous. You consider using await operator too. Okay. That's okay. Let me do that. Okay. So I just build my application. Okay. And then start using of this thing. So again, coming to definition of this continuous speech recognition. So what I did was I just uh, getting this object with my subscription and then adding some events, recognize, start, and stop. In the start, what I'm doing is I'm going to just start my speech. And I'm putting some do I loop here and asking uh, to press enter to stop. So when the user presses enter, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this method because it's coming out from the loop, right? It is checking here while the key not equal to enter. When I press enter, it is true, then coming out of loop and this is going to be executed. And once it is stopped, this event is going to trigger out and it is getting the data and printing in the console. Now, when I run now, hi, uh, hello, uh, how are you? So welcome to the uh, Cartoon Do service. Oh, so every time it is firing. Uh -huh. Okay. Good. Uh, uh, welcome to the uh, you know demonstration part for your speech to text. So we're just trying to you know. Uh, uh, record the complete speech and then put it into document. So uh, don't want to um, get into the brief of what the speaker is speaking and only consider when a speaker is pressing enter key and collate all the speech into text. So this is a very nice uh, service providing by Microsoft. It's basically indirectly, you know, uh, uh, giving all AI features, uh, which is actually required for a data scientist. So like, you know, pulling off all, you know, kind of NLP features, machine learning features, and robotic kind of stuff also we can build using cognitive services. Um, thanks for uh, having this and uh, thanks for giving this uh, features and also. So thank you very much. And uh, with that, I'm going to end my session. I'm just pressing enter key now. If you look at here, till so far it is 
uh, no, uh, having all the speech, what I'm, uh, no, having conversation. When I press enter, then it, it just, you know, invoke session ended. Okay. So if you want it, this is in loop. So, right, when the speech is recognized, coming here and keeping in that. Okay. So that, that's the reason every time it is coming and keeping that stuff into this here. So every time the speech is coming here, so only thing you need to do is if you wanted to, uh, you know, uh, uh, put that in final statement, like, so you need to define a global variable, right? Uh, let us say like string is your result equal to string dot empty, right? So this thing, I'm going to use it here. String equal to string plus, you know, result dot text. So, so what it will do is it will append my just your result. Let me declare here, right? So I'll have complete text text here, right? I'm just opening all the stuff. So instead of keeping to know this line of statement to print here. So once my speech is done, right? I'm coming out of here. And then I'm printing. So I just wanted to print it. So if that is the case, I think I must print here as well. So static string, right? So this statement I'm going to give it in here. So final statement is str result. Right? So let me try now. So instead of uh, no um, uh, converting every time, I just wanted to convert complete speech at one time. Hey, hi, hello. How are you? How are you doing? So welcome to the session. It looks uh, huge crowd today, and I'm very much happy and thanks for the attendance. And uh, once again. Uh, uh, thanks for all your cooperations and uh, this is a very good session today about cognitive services. So one of the cognitive services which I'm going to explain today is speech to text, which is really, really uh, very useful for, uh, uh, you know, the real time scenarios like where, let us take an example, if, uh, if any person want to, uh, you know, document a complete speech because of his, uh, uh, you know, uh, kind of expertise or uh, insufficient skills that uh, he, he doesn't understand while he's speaking. Then he wanted to understand and go through the speech in the, uh, you know, uh, later of the session. Then he wanted to make that speech into text. Then they can use that API and convert speech into text and they can save it and they can go through the same document in the later. So, uh, so far, uh, this is something we are trying in C Sharp, and um, same thing you can use it in all the languages, and you can convert the speech to text. Thanks for uh, Microsoft giving this good, uh, no kind of uh, wonderful opportunity having these services to uh, adapt into applications to boost up applications with different features. Thank you. Look at here. When, and when, as soon as the presenter is said as a surrender, the final statement is this thing. <clears throat> so whatever speech I've been uh, uh, spoke about all this is nonsense. <laughs> Sorry, uh, all this information is being uh, padded, appended to my one of the global variable that is just your result here. 
So that is the result I was you now printing after my uh, function walk here. That's why I can see a complete uh, you know, uh, information in one line that is final statement. Hey, hi, hello, how are you all doing? So welcome to the session, blah, 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 right? So this is something uh, uh, working uh, very beautifully. And I think that it will give a lot of benefits if you are integrating this into your real-time applications. Like especially when patient and doctor is talking about some disease, and doctor is speaking in some in English language or French or German language, right? Let us assume that he's speaking in English, and patient or user doesn't understand because of insufficient skill or is not aware of the complete English or he is not that much fluent in understanding or speaking. Then he is going to document that and send it to. Uh, concerned person so that you will look at that and after the session right so this is something i just wanted to explain about speech to text it looks good now i think we did two demonstrations here one is no uh, uh you know dynamically like you know converting it each order each sentence uh as soon as uh, user is having a brief another thing is continuous speech where you uh um, customize the Kind of events where, like, you no know, putting the condition saying that after pressing enter, you wanted to you know display complete text. Okay, so thanks for listening this video and please subscribe this channel for more videos. Thank you.